This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Work Less and Do More. Meetings. I just love meetings. No, no, I don't. I hate meetings, but not all meetings. Just horrible, unproductive, time-wasting, ambiguous, soul-sucking, inefficient, unclear, vague, chatty, redundant meetings, which is most of them. In episode six, 11 years ago, can you believe it? Meeting Madness 1, we learned how to make meetings better by understanding the kinds of meetings that you're running. And then in episode 14, we learned to speed up meetings by assigning roles. And then there was a 10-year gap because, you know, meetings. And in how to lead a meeting when you're not the facilitator, we learned to make sure that everything was under control. Your control. Now, if I facilitated every meeting, it would be different. People who have been in meetings with me start by cowering in fear at my impressively productive approach. But they come around, and before long, every meeting becomes a model of perfectly productive process. (laughs) Or else. While it's impossible for me, or (laughs) glorious me as I like to think of myself, to run every meeting for you, Here are the top five things that you can do in your next meeting to make things run smoothly. And because you are glorious you, devoted to all that is good in the world, I'm going to give you 20% more things than any other top five list you've ever encountered. So hold on to your hats because it's going to be a wild ride. One, have the right people in the room. Because when you're calling a meeting, make sure you know who will attend and why. Meetings cost money. Someone's paying the salaries for people to sit in a meeting, and a one-hour meeting with six $80,000 engineers costs around $240. If you're going to pay, at least make it count. Run through your proposed attendee list and ask yourself what each person will get out of the meeting. You're inviting Sasha? Why? Sometimes they need to be there for reasons of substance. Sasha needs information that will be shared. It's a complicated issue, so sharing in person is best as it lets Sasha ask questions and get clarification. Or... Maybe decisions will be made, and Sasha needs to be there to give input into the decision, or perhaps Sasha will be in charge of carrying out the decision and needs to understand the reasoning behind it. These are reasons of substance for Sasha's presence. Oftentimes, of course, someone needs to attend for emotional reasons, we call this politics. They need to be part of making a decision so they buy into the result, or they're in a position of power and they're on an ego trip and they need to be present to get their ego gratification. Petty? Sure. Small-minded? Absolutely. And when you have a narcissistic power-mad colleague? Unfortunately, necessary. Two, schedule meetings at odd times. Rather than starting and ending on the hour, schedule your meetings for odd times, like 3.08 p.m., and then start the meeting immediately at 3.08 p.m. The same way that our brains think of 9.97 as different from $10, 3.08 p.m. is different from 3 p.m., People see the 08 and something in their brain believes it's somehow more serious or more real than just 3 o'clock. And this also gives you 8 minutes at the top of the hour to review your notes and get ready because, of course, you have notes to review. One of which is, 3. Use a statement of purpose. Because first among your notes is your statement of purpose for the meeting. Every meeting needs one, even if it's just in your head. Although, it should go out with the meeting invitation and repeat it for everyone at the start of the meeting itself. Weekly status meeting is not a statement of purpose. It's a description of the meeting. It's a synonym for weekly torture session. A statement of purpose might be like this. This meeting is so everyone has a chance to ask the team for help on a pressing problem. That's a statement of purpose. It might be called weekly status meeting, but its purpose is helping people get unstuck. Remind everyone of that and you'll have a much more focused meeting because people will know how to steer things to satisfy the purpose of the meeting. Four, distribute an agenda. The purpose is the why of the meeting, and you'll also need an agenda, which is the what. List the topics you'll discuss at the meeting and the decisions you plan to make. Decide how long you'll spend on each item, and then your timekeeper can keep the meeting running according to that schedule. Your times don't have to be exact. You can always alter them on the fly, but the discipline of writing them down will make it clear just how many things will, or won't, fit into your meeting. 5. End with consolidated action items. There's nothing worse than a meeting you leave never quite knowing why you'd been there in the first place. At the end of the meeting, your scribe will have made a record. Being an awesomely perfect scribe, of course, their notes will include a list of all of the decisions made, and they'll also include action items. Those are things that meeting members have committed to do. End the meeting with a quick review of the decisions made by the group. Then review the action items and who's going to do each one so everyone knows how their lives are different having attended the glorious, glorious meeting that you're running. If someone is leaving with no action items and they aren't affected by the decisions made, their time was wasted. If, however, they needed to be there for political or persuasion reasons, 
then they needed to be there. But in terms of the difference that it made to their lives, the meeting actually did nothing. And number six, which is the 20% extra in this five-item list, wait for electronics. When it comes to doing nothing, there's no way for people to check out of a meeting than to use their electronics. Ban electronics from meetings. No email, no cell phones. If you have to take notes, do it on paper. If it's not important enough to write down by hand, it's not important enough to type into a distraction machine that takes people away from what's going on. If you can't even imagine a meeting without laptops, give it a shot. You might find that when no one is on their computers, you can all work face-to-face and actually get things done. And if someone is on their computer and they miss what's going on, decide and communicate your policy in advance. Personally, I neither repeat nor elaborate on points that someone missed because they were busy fiddling with their toys. Their lack of attention should not be paid for by everyone else in the room. That's simply not fair. You can also simply stop talking while someone is on their device and wait patiently for them to bring their attention back to the room. Nothing is said, but the message is clear. You're wasting our time. Close your darned laptop, turn off your phone, and be part of this meeting. While you're busy shaming your misbehaving tech-addicted minions, you may as well shame yourself while you're at it, because the only reason that they were on their device is because they weren't getting anything useful from the meeting. And that's on you. And it's a signal that you need to do better next time. Meetings can suck. Make them suck less. Invite the right people. Make sure everyone knows the purpose of the meeting. Give them an agenda in advance and stick to it. Start at an odd time so they take you seriously. End with a recap of decisions and actions, and if someone takes out their electronics, beat them mercilessly with a wet noodle until they put them away again. And the next time, make your meeting even more interesting. Like it or not, we need meetings and communication to get awesome things done. If you want to live in the land of milk and unicorns, just streamline your meetings so you can work less, do more, and have a great life. I'm Steve Robbins. Follow Get It Done Guy on Twitter and Facebook. If you're self-employed or a general manager or responsible for your own time, Get It Done groups help you stay focused on what's important and develop the habits you need for consistent, successful progress. Learn more at steverrobbins.com. Work less, do more, and have a great life. 